Hey guys, so a couple of weeks ago, I shared with you some stories related to my Italian heritage and as it relates to my four generation spaghetti and meatball recipe. Well, with St. Patrick's Day upon us, I thought it was the perfect time to pay tribute to the other side of my family, which my mother always likes to remind me, especially around St. Patrick's Day, that in addition to being half Italian, I am also a quarter English and a quarter Irish. So this recipe for St. Patrick's Day is dedicated to my early Irish ancestors who came over on a boat from Ireland headed to Massachusetts. They had a big family of five kids, which then led to my mom's own family of five children, which then led to the extended generation that I'm a part of. And let me tell you, those family reunions where we all get together are quite a blast. This group really knows how to have a good time. <laughs> so for this St. Patrick's Day, I wanted to create an elegant dessert that would pay homage to my early Irish ancestors. And when I think of them, back in the Victorian era, I think of them sitting in an elegant parlor room, enjoying something like a chocolate whiskey cake with a caramel toffee glaze. It's a fantastic dessert that's really easy to put together. Let me show you how to make it. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a large Pyrex bowl. We are then gonna place two ounces of bittersweet chocolate. To that, we are gonna add a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. So using the two types of chocolate is what is going to create a really rich, dark, decadent cake. Then we are gonna add a cup of hot boiling water. This will allow that cocoa powder to bloom, as they say, which will deepen the flavor and allow it to really give you the best chocolate punch. Then we are gonna add two cups of white sugar. Now at first glance, this might look like a ton of sugar, but keep in mind that the cocoa powder is unsweetened. So the nice thing about this dessert, and this is why my mom likes this recipe, is that it's very chocolatey and rich without being overly sweet. Then we are gonna add a cup of vegetable oil. Now, I've done a lot of experimentation with cake recipes, and I have found that vegetable oil will get you a moister cake than butter. And I think it has to do with the fact that there is water in butter, and it's not really a pure fat the way that vegetable oil is. But if you wanted to use butter, you certainly could. I just find that the vegetable oil tends to work a little bit better for a moister cake. Then we are going to add three eggs and two egg yolks. Give that a stir just until it's nice and combined. Then we are gonna add one tablespoon of vanilla and two tablespoons of Irish whiskey. Now, if you don't drink, you could definitely leave the whiskey out, but because I'm making this for St. Patrick's Day and paying homage to my Irish ancestors, I had to throw in the whiskey. You won't taste it in a kind of boozy way. It really just is more about the flavor because as the cake bakes, it will actually cook off the alcohol, but it is that nice flavor that does remain, which helps to just accentuate all the richness of the chocolate. So you can set that mixture aside and then we are going to sift together our dry ingredients. You're going to combine a cup and a quarter of flour, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and one teaspoon of baking soda. Go ahead and just sift that together and then you will see you will have a very nice fine floured texture. Now when it comes to sifting dry ingredients, I try to avoid that step as much as possible. Who needs the extra work, right? But I will say for this cake, I make an exception because you really want to have a delicate fine crumb to this chocolate cake. And the only way to do that is to avoid mixing your cake or over mixing your cake by trying to incorporate the flour. If you sift your flour, you're going to end up with a finer textured flour, which doesn't need to be mixed as much as if you had flour that you didn't sift. So in this instance, I say, go ahead and sift. You want to use the least amount of turns to incorporate the flour. So one of the things I like to do is just use a wire whisk and do a nice figure eight, just making sure you're getting all that flour incorporated and as soon as it is, stop. And basically our batter is done. So now our next step is to take a bunt pan. Now when it comes to bunt pans, they're not all created equal. I think the best ones are the ones that come non-stick. However, just for some added assurance, I also like to spray it with a little baking cooking spray. Because let's be honest, the whole idea of a bun cake is to be able to release it and see that beautiful design. And if for whatever reason it ends up sticking here or there and it tears, mm, game over, it's not gonna be as good. So take the added measure of a little bit of cooking spray and you'll be happy you did. And then you're gonna pop it in the oven at 350 degrees for exactly 40 minutes. 40 minutes I have found is the perfect amount of time. And the best way to know that it's done is to take a long skewer or a long toothpick. One of the things you wanna know about baking cakes and bun pans is that they're really deep. And so a little tiny toothpick might just get the top of the cake, but it's not gonna make sure that it's really cooked all the way through. So a long toothpick or a skewer is really the way to go. 
Then when your cake is cool enough to handle, you're gonna go in with a cooling rack, place it on top, and flip that cake over. And when you release it, you will see you will have a beautiful design. I love bun cakes. They're very vintage and sort of old world, and they're not used a lot today. And I think they deserve a comeback because you end up with a beautiful design with hardly any effort. I find that the layer cakes, they take a little bit of doing to create something impressive, but a bun cake does all the work for you. Then we are gonna take out a sheet pan and we are gonna line it with foil and we're gonna take our cooling rack and place it inside. Now you can see that our cake is all ready to be glazed and we won't have a big mess to clean up after the caramel starts to drip over the cake. Now making homemade caramel is actually easier than you think. You just have to follow a few key tips. So tip number one is you wanna make sure that you use a saucepan with a high profile, meaning that it's nice and deep and you'll see why in a minute. Then you are going to add a cup of white sugar and you're gonna place your flame on a medium high setting. Now, do not walk away. <laughs> this is not the time to multitask. You really need to watch that sugar because if it starts to boil over and burn, you will have a huge mess on your hands that can really scald you and hurt you. There's nothing worse than a sh hot sugar burn, so definitely watch it. But what you will start to see is that that sugar will begin to melt down. And as it does, you can take a wire whisk and just start to give it a good stir. You'll start to see that that liquid will begin to turn a beautiful amber brown. You wanna take it a little bit further and allow that liquid to actually become translucent so you'll be able to see through it and then it'll start turning into a beautiful caramel color. At that stage, you wanna add a half a cup of heavy cream. So here's my second tip for you. It is much better if you can add heavy cream that is either warmed or at room temperature because you'll see when you pour that heavy cream in, this caramel is going to boil up and it is going to look like a witch's brew. And you're gonna think you've totally ruined your caramel. You haven't, don't worry, it'll settle down as you keep stirring it. But if you take cold cream and throw it into that hot caramel mixture, it'll actually start to congeal and you'll end up with a really tough, almost like homemade candy on your hands. So you wanna make sure that you use room temperature or warmed cream. Then the final step is just to add a quarter teaspoon of salt. You'll see it's a really great combination between that sweetness of the caramel and the little saltiness that the salt will provide. Now it's time to glaze our cake. So we're gonna take a small ladle and you're going to begin to pour that hot caramel on the top of the cake. So this is where gravity really comes in handy because as you pour it on the top of the cake, it will start to drizzle down and create these wonderful, beautiful drip marks along the side of your bun cake. Then we are gonna add a quarter cup of toffee bits to the top. So toffee bits you can find in the baking aisle, usually next to the chocolate chips. But if you can't find the toffee bits, you could also use some nuts, that would be great. And you wanna let this cake rest and set. Typically an hour is really good before you start to move it because if your cake is still warmed inside and you go to try to move the cake to a cake stand, it could crumble on you. So you wanna make sure all of your hard work does not go to waste and that your cake is actually wonderfully cooled, set, and ready to be moved. Then the finishing touch to this beautiful cake are some homemade crepe paper shamrocks. Now I cannot take credit for this idea. These actually were made by my friend Robert Mahar of Kin Community. If you wanna know how to make them, head on over to Kin Community, just click the annotation and his video for how to make the crepe paper shamrocks has also posted today. Now Robert is getting ready to start posting videos to his own channel too. So if you're not yet a subscriber to Robert's channel, you wanna make sure you subscribe because he has got some really wonderful, clever ideas to help make your life a little bit more beautiful and handmade. Then to serve, you can slice a generous piece of this beautiful cake, place it on a plate, and serve it with a dollop of lightly scented homemade whipped cream. If you wanna know my recipe for the whipped cream, it's also in the description, and I have spiked it with a little bit more Irish whiskey, <laughs> just to send it over the edge. And there you have it, a elegant, sophisticated dessert to serve this year on St. Patrick's Day. I hope you guys give it a try and let me know what you think. And mom, I hope this dessert would make your relatives proud. <laughs> At the very least, I'm looking forward to sharing a slice of it with you this St. Patrick's Day. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Could have been a pain